former chief of army staff, uh, Major General Buratai, reveals who created insecurity in Nigeria. So he is trying to tell us that insecurity in Nigeria is created by some people uh, called the politicians. Okay. So what did he do as a chief of army staff then under Buhari's government? What did he do about managing insecurity? Rather than fighting the Boko Haram and the bandits in the north, he was busy deploying soldiers to the southeast to annihilate the Igbos and the IPOB and ESN, who are actually trying to protect themselves from the uh, terrorism of the Fulani headsmen. Under his watch, too, that was when the mayhem was conducted at uh, the Lekki Togate in October 2020. Okay, so uh, what did he do? So his regime is more innocent people died than the bandits and the terrorists. So what did he do about security and why is he speaking now? I think that is the question he needs to answer. Okay, but let's dive into the details and hear what he's trying to say here. Former Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Buratai, asserted on Friday that the current security plaguing the country is as a result of decisions made by the political class. Buratai made this statement while delivering a lecture titled Public Service and Imperatives for National Security in Nigeria during the second stanza of the 2023 National Public Service Lecture at the 65th anniversary of the University of Ibadan Alumni Association. Hmm. He also criticized those who called for his removal from office during his tenure due to the security challenges in the country, attributing such demands to personal biases rather than an objective assessment of his performance. He said these individuals might have held negative opinions of General Bratai based on subjective factors, such as personal preferences or biases unrelated to his actual capabilities. It is crucial to approach discussions regarding national security matters with a fair and impartial mindset, focusing on relevant aspects rather than personal biases and idiosyncrasies. Can you imagine? He's still, he's still proud, talking about himself. Meanwhile, we had more major bloodshed under his watch as chief of staff within Buhari's government than ever in the history of Nigeria. I think he should hide his face in shame. The National Assembly had twice or more passed resolutions calling for the sack of the service chiefs. The President Muhammad Ubari had told the Ninth National Assembly to mind their business. So if properly interpreted, the call for the Ninth Assembly by the Ninth Assembly was to de derail the democracy by the military. Can you imagine? This could be a lesson for political actors. It was a direct confrontation, blaming the service chiefs as if they are the ones who started the security. The insecurity had been uh, being faced in the country since 2009 was the creation of the political class with a strong political will. It can be surmounted. Okay. So it was created by political class. So with strong political will, it can be surmounted. So he urged politicians public servant and civil servant to uphold the highest standards of integrity, integrity discouraging corruption, which he noted has plagued the country's political landscape for decades, undermining public confidence and impeding progress. So look at who is talking about corruption. How did the military fare under his control? How did uh, uh, he spend the budget for the military? Okay. So he became a billionaire under under Buhari's government as chief of army staff. He was even more powerful than the chief of defense staff. So what do you have to say? Yeah. So Buratai is now coming out because he's now wearing mufti. So he can now come and address the public and talk reasonably like somebody who feels the pain of the people or who understands the political landscape of Nigeria. He's, I'm sure he's warming up to be a politician and a governor of his state or a, or a senator. That's what he's warming up to do. Mm -hmm. This man, uh, we should watch him. It's not to be trusted. He's among the people in Buhari's government that put Nigeria where it is today in terms of security. 
So he emphasized that the widespread occurrences of misappropriation of public funds, bribery and embezzlement have di diverted resources from crucial services leading to disenchantment among citizens. Furthermore, he advised politicians to demonstrate accountability and transparency in their actions and decisions. Politicians often make lofty promises during election campaigns but fail to deliver once in power. The lack of accountability erodes public confidence and perpetuates the perception that politicians are more interested in people Boratari added. The chairman for the event, former Inspector General of Police Michael Kiro, represented by Deputy Commissioner of Police Operations for your State Command, Adejobi Akinade, Akinade, urged the public to rally behind the police force in their endeavors to address the security challenges facing the nation. In his opening remarks, Professor Sawa Gebre Nitio, the president of the University of Ibadan Alumni Association, worldwide stated that the lecture's purpose was to emphasize the contribution of public service in safeguarding national uh, security can you imagine so Buratai is not blaming politicians for the security in nigeria the same politicians who used him and normally when the politicians are misbehaving it's the military that should call them to order but because they they they, they were working hand in hand in fact there's a very thin line between the military and the politicians right now in fact, the, the military have seen that when they retire as generals, the next place to go is to join politics. That is the next level to continue their career. And that's exactly what Boratai is planning here, trying to, you know, try to woo Nigerians, to make Nigerians believe that he was good in his time. But we are calling for a sack because of sentiment. All these ones have been Okay. The, 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 the crime against humanity that took place under Boratai's was but I tell me to explain it, especially the mayhem that happened at Lekki Togate in 2020 that killed a lot of youths, threw some of them into the lagoon under uh, uh, Sogolus and Tunubu's watch in Lagos. That story has not ended. He needs to ask uh, about that. Okay? A lot of innocent people that were killed in Imo State and then the entire Southeast in the name of fighting uh, ESN and IPO. Rather than meanwhile, uh, the the terrorists were terrorizing Benue, Plateau, that's around Middle Belt and the northeast, northwest, and north central. Okay, they uh, under under the same administration, the terrorists were killing Christians in Southern Kaduna under the watch of Erufai. He didn't do anything about it, and he's coming here to talk. This man should face down for shame. That is it. And then under his watch too. The, the terrorists and bandits gained ground in Niger State to a point that they even came to bomb the, the guard of brigade in Abuja. He was there and he didn't do anything. And now he's talking. I don't understand. Yeah? I don't understand. So, so I think this man's statement, blaming politicians. Well, we know that politicians in Nigeria are not to be trusted. They are not even the main reason we have all the problems we have in Nigeria, whether political, whether security, whether social, whatever you can call it. Okay, but then he himself has been part of them, even though he was in uniform. So he shouldn't come here. It's a case of pot calling kettle black. If he's to be proved how he spent the money, uh, the, or the budget for the military, especially the army, he should, I'm sure, he will have some questions to answer. If he's also to be proved in the way he handled some of the security issues in the southeast, this the northeast and the and the north central i'm sure and even middle belt i'm sure he will have some questions to answer he can't say he didn't know what happened just saying anything here to look good so that they can pave way for his uh, political career so that is what he has said i uh, thank you for listening and your comment